Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Development. And today, we're gonna to be tackling a problem that I see affect people on a daily basis in the kitchen. And I think it needs to be addressed immediately. And that problem is this. You're lining You're your lining tins like an, like an idiot. idiot. Now, don't let my boyish good looks deceive you. I've been cooking and teaching people how to cook for quite a long time. And during that time, I've seen a huge range of Let's call them interesting techniques, from novice cooks and seasoned chefs alike while attempting to line a tin. One thing these techniques have all had in common is they're all bloody stupid. So if you're guilty of perpetrating any of these terrible techniques, it's time to change your ways. Step out of the shadows of kitchen buffoonery and start lining your tins like you're not totally brain dead. In this video, we're gonna step away from the normal format and instead cover some of the more common idiotic tin lining techniques they often see and how we can rectify. So if you're ready, hold on to your dunce hat because we're gonna start right here. Cutting to size. So before we even get to the different types of tins, let's tackle the biggest problem I see when it comes to lining them. And that is cutting the greasy paper to the correct size. You would not believe how many people just cannot seem to grasp the simple concept that if you cut your greasy paper too small, there won't be enough of it to cover your tin properly. You see them rearranging the paper, pulling at it, desperately willing for it to grow magically and stretch just to the right size. This is never gonna happen, so give up, get rid of the tiny piece of grease booth and start again. Now, if you're someone who always makes your grease roof paper too big instead, opting to cut it to size after you've got it into your tin, you may think you've dodged a bullet. Well, think again, all this shows is you have given no thought to lining your tin and more often than not, you're just wasting all that paper you trim off anyway. Either way, whether you're cutting it too small or too big, it comes down to the fact that you're being too lazy to take the extra 30 seconds you would need to make sure you cut the paper to the correct size. So before we even start talking about lining any tins, we need to agree that we're going to stop being idiots and make a concerted effort to make sure we cut the greasy paper to the correct size for whatever tin we're lining. Okay, now that we've tackled what I consider to be the main culprit for idiotic tin lining, we can now tackle the tins themselves. Now when it comes to lining your tin, if you're guilty of any of these techniques, then I'm afraid to say you too have been lining your tin like an idiot. Forcing it in, this method is exactly how it sounds and it is the epitome of ridiculous tin lining. The paper wrinkles up, folds over on itself, it can rip, it can tear, it's completely lazy, totally ridiculous, stop it. Cutting corners. The name doesn't actually do this technique justice, the amount of work involved. But trust me, it is a complete waste of time. This technique leaves the corners of your tins unprotected, allowing cake batter and sponge mixture to seep through and stick in the tin, causing you a world of pain later on. Do yourself a favor and skip this technique altogether. Baselining. Sometimes baselining is necessary, like on a baking sheet when you're making cookies, but in a square or rectangle tin with edges that you don't want your baked goods to stick to, it is a total waste of time. So stop being surprised that if you trace the base of a tin and cut that out, that it doesn't come up the sides when it comes time to line it. Base lining is really good for circle tins, but this is making a cartouche for crying out loud. It is not the way to line a circle tin. Also, if you do this and start from the center of the grease proof, stop it. You're just wasting tons of paper. Start from the edge and you'll keep your wastage down to an absolute minimum. Look, by starting at the edge when you line a square or rectangle tin, half the work's already done for you. Okay, now we've covered basically everything you shouldn't do, let's talk about what you should do when lining your tin. Square and rectangle tin. The technique is basically the same regardless of how big or small, shallow or deep your tin is. All you have to do for success, as we discussed earlier, is cut the paper to the right size. So first thing you're gonna to want to do is establish what size you need your grease paper to be. You rarely ever want your paper to be more than an inch bigger than your tin. Much more than that and you risk it affecting the cooking or even worse, the paper falling into the cake mixture or the brownie or whatever it is you happen to be cooking in your tin. So place the tin in the corner of the paper and adjust it until the paper comes up about an inch above the tin. You can just do this by eye. Then fold over the paper on the other edges to mark where you're going to have to trim the paper later. Remove the tin and using a sharp knife, cut along each fold until you're left with a piece of grease through paper slightly larger than your tin. Keep those trimmings though because they may come handy in future. Then using a pair of scissors, start at a corner and make a three to four inch cut towards the center of the paper and repeat until you've cut a line from each corner. And that's it, the paper's ready. That wasn't that hard, was it? 
Now all you have to do is lightly grease your tin and gently press the grease with paper into the edges and the corners of the tin and then like magic, your tin is beautifully lined. This technique works with any square, rectangle and even loaf tins. Circle tins! Circle tins are a piece of cake to line regardless of their size. Once again, we just need to cut the paper to the right size. We're going to be base lining this tin properly and lining the edges with a separate piece of grease proof paper. So place your tin close to the corner of the paper and draw around the base of the tin. Then using a pair of scissors cut around the line giving you a perfect circle to put in the base. Then using the tin as a guide fold over the paper on the remaining edges adjusting it so the paper comes up no more than an inch above the tin. Remove the tin and using a sharp knife cut along each fold until you're left with strips of grease proof paper slightly larger than the depth of your tin. Now if you kept your trimmings from any square or rectangle tin lining, you might find that they come in handy here, a little bit less wastage. Lightly grease your tin and gently press your grease proof paper into the base and the edges of the tin. And would you look at that, you've managed to line a circle tin perfectly. If you're lining a spring form tin, it's even easier. For the base, you only need to lay a piece of paper over the base of the tin and push the spring form edge down over the top and clip it in place. See? Easy. Then just line the sides as you would for any other circle tin. And that's it. That's all you need to do to line your tin and not look like a chimp using tools for the first time while you're doing it. So if you're guilty of lining your tin like an idiot, then it's time to change your ways. Stop wasting your time with stupid techniques, stop wasting all that grease and paper, and why not follow this handy little guide instead? If you like this video, then you might want to reevaluate your life because I've basically just spent the whole thing abusing you. But perhaps you didn't like it, but you did learn something. And if that's the case, why not hit that like button down below and let me know. Plus, if you're new here and you like what you see, maybe you like being verbally abused, why not hit that subscribe button instead? And you can hit that tricky little bell for notifications as well. I promise I'll try and be nicer next week. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.